Hey guys, how's it going? It's Itanios here, and today we're recording episode number two of our Inter Milan Crew series. So today, guys, we've got more transfers and a couple of games, and it's going to be a very exciting episode after uh, after playing through this whole whole thing. But uh, right away, guys, I decided we needed a center back because uh, we had an injured Murillo, and uh, he wasn't coming back for a little while. So we were going after PSG's Marquinhos. He's 22 years old and he's a very talented center back. So we drop a 29 million euro bid on him, see if we could get him to come to our club and uh, light it up on the back line. So guys, uh, after that we would kind of just be going through. Uh, we had some training and stuff like that, but uh, we were also trying to go after Savage and they wouldn't take it. But they wanted PSG wanted 42. A uh, million euros for Marquinhos. I decided, you know what? No, that's way too much. Let's offer them 35 and uh, Hopefully they'd bite on that bid. Uh, we weren't sure But uh, we'd be doing more trainings a fairly decent training session there and uh, Yeah, Joe Mario is uh, really starting to get up there for his uh, He's almost hit the 84 rating already, but uh, Mark or PSG didn't want the 35 million bids we offered them 39 and yeah it's just going back from this transfer to training you can see we were uh, simulating with the same players again trying to get Jao Mario up to his uh, 84 rated there just through the training and uh, yeah kind of just go from there but uh, Milan signed Giovanni Dos Santos who I think did play in the Serie A before but PSG would accept the 39 million euro bid we dropped on Martinos, so that's a very that's very good news for us because we needed to sign a center back because our back line was okay but needed a little bit more work. And David Alaba actually signed for Juventus, so that's a ton of money they put into him. But uh, after that, guys, we'd be simulating a match here, and it would be against uh, Sheva Verona, and we were playing with our best team just kind of to start off the season well see if we could get a win here and uh, yeah it wasn't a very eventful game for the most part it finished pretty even and uh, Sheva Verona would actually score first in the 24th minute and uh, we were down at halftime so not not a very good start at all from us and uh, then after that guys there'd be some subs and Perisic would score the first goal for our team finally but unfortunately we would draw 1-1 against Sheva Verona which was not the best result that I was hoping for. I was looking for at least a win and at least two or three goal difference. But it's okay guys, we tied and uh, yeah, moving on from there. But PSG were actually looking to sign Griezmann and I don't think they did end up getting this deal through even though it would have been a blockbuster deal if they did. And uh, yeah guys, just more training, trying to get Mario up to his uh, 84 rating there. And he's not doing it very well, but we did get Kondogbia up to a 77 rating, which is very good. And uh, hopefully he will keep increasing like that and get up past his potential. But after that, guys, we'd be simulating another match. It would be in the Serie A, and we'd be playing against Palermo. And it would be, this was a much more eventful game. Mario scored in the 12th minute. It was a very early goal. Icardi scored in the 25th. And uh, then Kerry Medel scored in the 36th for us, so 3-0 going into halftime. They'd be making subs, we'd be making some subs. And uh, Benega would score in the 60th minute. And then Icardi would score in the 72nd. And guys, that would pretty much do it for the match. We'd finish 5-0 against Palermo, so a very good performance there. Palermo is not strong at all this year, so it's too bad for them. But now, guys, we were in the very last hours of this transfer window. And Aubameyang actually signed, made a quick fire move to Chelsea. We were looking at him, but uh, they wouldn't take it. And uh, yeah, guys, we were actually, we did make a counter offer here. Roma was trying to sign Mario, or Mario Icardi, and uh, we counter offered them to 74 and a half million, I think, was the bid that I placed. That's how much I wanted, which is a complete, it's, it's like 10 million more than what he's worth, but... We'd offer that 74.5 million and uh, see if Roma would take that for whatever reason. And they actually did. They ended up buying Icardi for 74.5 million. 
So we'd be looking into players like Harry Kane and uh, Romelu Lukaku. And I think there was one other player that we did end up looking into, and it was Alexander Lacazette. He has actually got one better potential than I think Icardi does. I might be wrong on that, don't quote me. But I think he's got one more potential. And uh, if we do sign him, he will be a very, very solid striker. But it's been all strikers in this transfer window. Aguero went to Barcelona, which in my opinion didn't make sense. But uh, you can see there, Everton wanted way too much for Lukaku. So we would be bringing it down to... Tottenham Hotspur's Harry Kane with 90 potential. He's a very young, talented striker. He's not the fastest, so that's maybe a chance where we won't want to take that, get a slower striker and not be able to improve that versus buying Lacazette, who's a much faster striker, and having that pace and that ability to counterattack and score very quickly up at the front. So uh, you're kind of just trying to decide at this point. We'd offer both of them the contracts. And down with five hours left, Harry Kane and Lacazette would both accept their contracts. Wolfsburg was offering way more for Lacazette than we had been offering. But uh, guys, it was really, I was trying to make a decision. I wasn't sure what I wanted. And uh, yeah, guys, eventually we decided, you know what? Lacazette's much faster. We can use him in the counterattack. And uh, he will be a very, 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 very solid striker for us. And... Uh, yeah, guys, there would be our blockbuster transfer for this transfer when we sell a Cardi and we would buy Lacazette. So that is, uh, that's a very big move. And uh, I think one of the other positions we'll have to improve by the next transfer window is our goalkeeper because we're going to need a backup goalkeeper. Lacazette was wearing number nine, so he'd be going into our uh, starting front there. He'd be one of the highest rated players in our team. I think he's the third highest rated player in our team there at 85 rating behind Handanovic and Miranda, who are both old, but Lacazette is wearing the number nine, and I think he is going to be one of our biggest like highlight players in this career mode for at least the next season, and after that, we might be able to sell him on for a lot of money and get better players, or we might keep him and, uh, you know, just try to try to keep improving him, get him up to his full potential as soon as possible, and uh, yeah, guys, after that, we'd just be looking to the team our team is looking very very good right now i am incredibly happy with it we did spend a lot of money in this transfer window especially with that uh, financial takeover but our back line i'm i think i'm the most impressed with our back line right now because we signed three new players for our back line and it is looking super solid and uh once murillo comes back from injury he will be going into our second team he will be a starting player in our second team and uh, he, I think he will really shut it down as soon as he gets back from this uh, broken tibia he has. But at 24 years old and 80 rated, I think he's got something like 83 or 84 potential. And uh, yeah, we're just looking forward to getting Murillo back. David Alaba signs for Juventus, which is tough because now we have to play against David Alaba, who is, an, I, I rate him very highly. I think he's one of the best two-way players in FIFA and uh, yeah then Adbanur would uh, move to West Ham and uh, yeah with just two hours left a lot of big transfers going on here he'd only go for 25 million but it wasn't a big deal and then uh, with one hour left no more transfers would happen there you could see the top transfers Alaba, Aguero, Icardi, Aubameyang, Carvalho, Rodriguez, Marquinhos so many players from our team were involved in this transfer window, but Manolos went to Chelsea for 26 million. That's all. If we had known, I didn't know he was uh, transfer listed for his, he had put in a transfer request. And if I had known that, we definitely would have signed him because he is a much, much pacier center back. And uh, yeah, he's got one less potential, but that would pretty much do it for the transfer window guys so if you found this transfer window exciting at all or you you're liking the content that i'm putting out then uh please leave a like and subscribe and uh we've got lots of games coming up in the next few episodes it's going to be a lot of simulation but a couple of highlight games every episode and uh yeah uh leave a like if you guys enjoyed and i will see you guys all in the next video take care